Hey, welcome back guys. Thank you so much for joining to watch another video. So today what we are going to see is how you can configure the FS Logix profiles along with your Azure file service which we created in the last one to make it work together. So the first step is to download the FS Logix agent and install it in your Windows virtual desktop image. So you sign in to the session desktop virtual machine and go and download the FS Logix available which is for free. Uh, so I make I will make sure that I put the link under the description on for the step by step guide. So you can follow the same process while you watch the video as well. So I just downloaded the FS Logix software. I'm going to extract it to show you all the content which is available within the directory. There are both 32 bit and 64 bit versions available. So it depends on which operating system or the session host you installed. Make sure to install the appropriate one. In Azure, it's just the 64 bit version. So go into the directory and install the FS Logix setup. So I'm launching the app. Accept the EULA and continue the installation. So the whole step setup process is not that complicated. It's fairly simple and it's a small application. I don't think the whole installation process is going to take more than a minute. So it looks like our setup has been successfully completed. So the first part is completed. The second part is configuration of FS Logix profile container. So you can perform this either by registry settings or group policy file settings as well. The most simple and effective method is using the registry settings which I'm going to show you just now. Again, uh, you can follow me on this video or you could head back to my blog which is a guide to cloud where I'm going to post an article which is going to explain all these things step by step. So you will be able to find out what's the registry key like, things like that. So what I'm going to do right now is going to create a key under H key local machine software Microsoft and FS logic. So the key is called profiles. You need to match the name exactly like that. Uh, you cannot have a lowercase then it won't work. So the P has to be capital. Then I'm going to create a couple of values there. A uh, few of the values are reg underscore SZ that is to mention the VHD location. If you remember in the previous video we created an Azure files file share for the profile location. So I'm going to create a value here which is going to point the VHD to the file we have created in the Azure files. So to find the profile storage location, I'm going to head back to my Azure portal. I'm going to find the storage which I created for storing the usage profile disk. I'll copy the location. So easiest way to do that is to select the storage account, go to properties and right underneath the file share service, you can copy the whole connection string. So I, I copied the storage account name. Um, I'm going to put that value here. The next thing is to go back to the Azure portal again. This time I'm going to copy the container we have created to store the user profile disk. So I copied the container. I pasted that. So this is a very important and crucial step. Make sure you have validate these steps a couple of times before you proceeding further. So I'm going to repeat the same process. I'm going to 
create few more values so i have laid out all these plans in the document which i'm going to put in the description below so i'm going to create few values which is going to delete the repeat folder i'm going to change the naming convention how the profile container is going to show up things like that so all of this information is available on the blog please go and check it out so now we have completed the necessary step for fs logics profile creation the final step is to verify the fs logics profile container on azure files so right now i don't have any files or profiles stored in the container we created so i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to log in as a specific user who's got rights to sign in to the virtual machine or the windows virtual desktop session host and when we sign in we are going to make sure that when the user make any changes is it going to be stored or captured in a profile disk and when a user signs off and sign back in are these settings changes what the user have done is been stored and it is been retrieved back to the particular user how is that going to work so that is what we are going to verify so i'm going to use the windows virtual desktop remote app sign in as the user who's got access to sign in to the session desktop the user account i'm going to use is called the bird person as you notice now i don't have any particular i don't have any file in this particular storage container i'm going to launch the session desktop for this particular user so while this is happening you may notice in the beginning you don't have any file but hopefully after we make any changes within the session host uh, you will start seeing some files on that particular mad drive and on the same azure portal as well so that is what we are going to verify and make sure it is going to be right so the first time when i'm signing in as you notice here it is saying please wait for the fs logics app services to be configured so that's a very good sign so if you have reached till now and if you are doing along with me and if you see that particular message that means that your session host is been configured to accept the fs logics profile so your profile container is going to be separate from your virtual machine or your session host it is no longer going to be your local machine keeping that file or a local file and print server it is going to be a separate container or a vhd we are going to keep isolated from your particular host machine so i'm gonna launch edge for the first time to make sure that i don't have to go through the same process the next time i want all of these settings and the changes what i'm gonna make is gonna be stored somewhere so the next time when i sign into this uh, virtual machine i want all of these settings to be stored so that i don't want to repeat this i'm gonna quickly change the desktop wallpaper that's the easiest change i can make and is so visible so next time when we sign in we should be able to see the new wallpaper that means that i have made some change which is visible and i don't want to keep on repeating the same change every time i sign in to this particular session host as you can see now I can immediately see this profile has been created within the map drive. So it has been named as the user. Let's head back to the Azure portal and see if we can see the change there. I hit refresh. I can see the same profile disk in the Azure portal as well. So what does that mean? All the changes what that particular user have made within that particular session is been created under this particular user profile disk. I'm going to do the same thing again, hit back on the session desktop, launch the session for that particular user and see if we can see all the changes what we have made 
is being retained as well. Another great feature of Windows Virtual Desktop is the snap functionality. So I can pretty much go and resize and reshape. The resolution is going to be automatically adjusted when I reshape the window. So I don't have to go into display resolution and change it. Looks like I can see the changes what we have made. Uh, when I launch the Edge browser, I don't have to go through the same process again. All of this has been completed. So on the next video, we are going to see how to install OneDrive per machine. So thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.